Welcome to the Microwave Medic. This is Jim Hoffman, your EMS Tips Chef, and I'll be giving you some quick tips on a variety of topics that you can use right now as an EMS provider that are sure to be the recipes for your EMS success. Microwave Medic is produced by EMS Office Hours, the live online podcast for EMS professionals. Okay, in this video, I just want to quickly uh, just go over the differences between a Macintosh or curved blade or the Miller or straight blade when performing endotracheal intubation. Now, you want to, of course, try to get the patient in a sniffing position as shown here in this picture, unless, of course, the patient has some type of a cervical spine injury. So, when you're uh, opening the patient's mouth, use a scissor technique. When you use your right thumb and your middle finger to perform a scissor type technique to get the mouth open and once you have that done you're going to hold the laryngoscope uh, blade and the laryngoscope handle in your left hand and insert the blade into the right side of the patient's mouth and displace the, the tongue a little bit to the left. Now when you're using the Macintosh blade or the curved blade as in this picture you're going to advance the tip of the blade into the space between the base of the tongue and the epiglottis or the vellecula and you want to try to go ahead and you're going to apply force once you have the blade in position at about a 30 to 45 degree angle and you're going to lift the entire laryngoscope and blade not just the blade itself where you're performing a rocking motion where you can actually want to break into the patient's teeth you want to lift the entire blade and, and laryngoscope handle at the same time sort of like p pointing it up to the uh, the ceiling where, where, where you are in one motion rather than rocking it backwards. Now uh, when you're using a uh, a Miller blade, let's look at that picture here, when you're using a Miller blade what you want to go ahead and do is put the tip of the blade into the posterior oropharynx and this picks up the entire epiglottis and, uh, and, and, and tongue anteriorly and actually laterally and again you're going to apply the same type of force uh, that you would with the Macintosh blade and don't rock the blade you want to use lift the entire blade and handle at the same time you can see here the differences between where you're placing the tip of the blade. Here you can see where it's being placed uh, on top of the uh, the epiglottis in order to pick it up and then with the Macintosh, we'll go back real quick here and the Macintosh you can see where it's going inside or in between the uh, the epiglottis and uh, the base of the tongue or the vellecula. So that's where you're going to the difference between where you're placing both of those two uh, tips of the other different types of blade. And of course once you go ahead and lift the the, the tongue, get the tongue out of the way and you place the blade properly and lift it in that angle, that 30, 30 to 45 degree angle, you'll be able to visualize the vocal cords and go ahead and pass your endotracheal tube. I hope this uh, clears up any confusion you might have had with the differences between a Miller or, or a Mac blade. Uh, preferences can be depending upon your skill level, depending upon your comfort level and what you're comfortable with. Uh, use what you're comfortable with but sometimes, you know what, some patients might require one or the other and if you're having a difficult time intubating with one blade or the other blade, try the opposite type of blade and maybe you'll have more luck when trying to intubate your patients. Uh, you want some more information on intubation and airways and things like that, go check out EMS seo.com lots of free resources over there i put a link below you can check it out when you get a chance uh hope this helped you out uh, as always stay safe jim hoffman from ems seo